but that's not true. Uh, numerical relativity indeed covers the merger phase. Uh, the merger phase is where the, the distance between the components is very small and strong gravity is at play, and the velocities are obviously non relativistic. Um, but numerical relativity is not able to cover the, the in spiral phase where the characteristic time scale of the, of the system <coughs> is too large to be covered by numerical simulations. It would take ages if you try to run a simulation that would cover um, the evolution including the in spiral phase. And therefore, there is to cover the in spiral stage, there is only the theoretical post gravity that can do that. Um, surprisingly, actually, and that's just like a, a comment, um, so I just told you that numerical relativity is not able to cover the spiral phase where we have uh, non-relativistic gravity. Uh, the surprising, surprising um, finding is that naively one would expect that post theory would not be able to cover strong gravity regime. And that's just a puzzle that actually, like, uh, even people who work 30, 30 years on this topic cannot still explain, but for some reason, uh, for some reason, results that one obtains from post newtonian theory, um, they still hold when going into strong gravity. There are many results that hold, um, that shouldn't hold in principle, um, and nobody like, has like, a very good insight for how to explain it. But that's like, a, just an interesting fact. Um, okay, specifically in the case of the detections that have been done so far, um, these are kind of equal mass binaries. These are the kind of binaries that were detected so far. And we are interested as the most uh, promising candidates also for future detection. So on this, on this plot that you see here, that means that we are sitting on an axis which is about here. Um, so the event takes place on this axis. So basically, um, all one needs is to glue together results of post theory with results of numerical simulations in order to get a complete waveform. Uh, in principle, when you have like different, when you have, for example, extreme mass ratio binaries, which is more relevant for ESA, for example, or in the future, if there will be like other uh, setups of arrays, um, then you start being interested in this part of the diagram, and then indeed, um, the third, the third uh, kind of physics that I mentioned earlier, it comes into play is black hole perturbation theory, where we have already the single object. This is relevant for the ring down phase, where we have a single object, and we want to just compute the quasi-normal modes. Um, at the end, then we use like black hole uh, perturbation theory, and then we use uh, this part of, of, the, of the plot. Then this part of the plot is relevant. Uh, but in principle, for the case of equal mass, uh, binary in any, any way numerical relativity covers this side of the waveform it can cover and does cover at the moment so this is mainly for uh, maybe for this it will be different but in the case of LIGO and the current detectors that we're talking about doing this kind of physics which many people do and it's important is more about understanding better the physics that goes on but it's not something that is necessary or used in the actual uh, models at the moment or in the future. Um, so just to give you like a true picture of, of the current state of affairs. Um, and so just to give credit to who to, to who should be to who credit should be given, uh, all of this was made possible by the breakthrough that was indeed made by Alessandro Bonano and Tibo de Mo in nineteen ninety nine which came up with this idea um, inventing this effective one body approach. The idea is very simple, it's just like just like the simple problem that we know from Newtonian physics where we map the two body problem to the one body problem. They say, okay, let's use this idea because what is the problem here? We want to have a continuous signal that covers an event that starts as a two body and ends as a one body. Uh, so the idea was exactly to use this kind of one body um, 
the mapping to one body that we know to be quantum physics, to extend it into GR in the, in the context of post Newtonian gravity, you just do it order by order uh, in the post Newtonian correction. So that was their idea. It was very nice. Indeed, it enabled all, all the current uh, gravitational waveforms, use the effective quantum body approach in this flavor or the other. I mean, it includes a lot of parameters that one puts in by end and many dirty stuff and gluing uh, but base, like the basic idea is always relying on that there is more dirty input which is not completely known but basically this is what this is the basis of all the current uh, so the, 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 the idea of the effective one body was to cover the whole event. Like, from the beginning, from the post Newtonian, you map it directly to a one body, and then you get a signal that is continuous all through the event. So, the effective one body measure was the solar and the basic of the final waveform? Sorry? I mean, so, in the effective one body approach, you get the effective measure, right? Yeah. And I just wonder, if this effective measure that you use as uh, pre we, okay, the the if, we, if we use the in the last part, yeah. um, I'm more aware. Actually, I I, would be, I just I'm honestly saying that I'm more aware uh, to the fact that they are more about stitching the post Newtonian part yeah. to the numerical part. Me, me too. So I, uh, I'm not so clear also in the last part. The, the first um, part, I understand. Yeah. Because yeah, the last part is usually kind of more trivial in the sense in the sense, I mean, that I don't know if they, like, if they do anything with the results of, uh, of black hole perturbation theory okay. into the waveform. Once 
one identifies. Even just two distinct scales in a problem, which is a very common thing in physics, right? We have many, many problems that have two characteristic scales. Once one um, identifies the situation, he should have a light bulb switching, saying, oh, that means I have a way to use EFT. So that's the only observation that you have to have. Once you identify the hierarchy of scales in the problem, and that was indeed a smart observation that Goldberger uh, published in 2007, is that the binary in spiral problem is a classic problem to be handled by EFT. Why is that? We have three clearly distinct scales in the problem. We have the scale of the single compact object, which signifies the scale of the, of the UV physics that goes on within the neutral star, or if it's a black hole, it would be the scale of the horizon. Okay, so we have RS, which if we consider it to be compact, we also can we also know that it goes like the mass, the scale. Then we have the orbital separation scale. And just from the Virial theorem, um, and from the fact that this is a post-Newtonian system, a post-Newtonian system should satisfy by definition the Virial theorem, uh, we have that um, the orbital separation scale is indeed um, goes like Rs over V squared. So we have a clear separation in terms of a small parameter V. V is our normal relativistic velocity. And we have the, the radiation wavelength scale, which is the radiation which is emitted from this binary to the asymptotic observer. Okay. And this also goes like R over V. So generally, we have, we have here like a cascade of scales, Rs, uh, goes like r v squared, goes like lambda v to the third, a clear hierarchy of scales. Uh, we are doing post gravity just to, to say what is the uh, what is the notation. The notation uh, of post gravity is an npn correction amounts to a v to the power of 2pn correction in gr to Newtonian gravity. So that's what we will be talking about. Our V is dimensionless, we consider it to be a like one. So our small parameter of the theory is V. And the whole switch that should go on in the mind of someone that wants to use EFT in different contexts uh, is that you should just identify what is the small parameter, basically. Once you have a small parameter, you can use EFT. Now, and then you can have once you have a nonlinear theory, we have everything, we have like loop computations and all the things which are familiar with QFT, they just won't be loops in H bar, they will be loops in other stuff. You can have loops in different interaction parameters. They don't have to be H bar. It's just a coincidence that they were first used in H bar, but they can be used in any different situations that one encounters. It's this, true. And that constructs all of the boundaries. So why do you have three scales instead of these two? So you're actually right. You just said the, the concluding observation is that basically the full scale of the theory is M, and all the rest is separated by, by powers of V. You just phrased uh, an observation that one should make. Um, yeah, and that's it. Like, but originally, when one considers this problem, you should identify exactly that that we have these three different scales and that's the way they relate. Um, now, once you identify these three different scales, you want to uh, describe the three different physics that goes on in each of the scales. Um, you construct for each of the scales, you want to, be, you want to construct an EFT that eliminates the scale. So first, you want to, des to describe an EFT that describes a single compact object, but not in, in, in its vicinity with some distance from it, so that we are suppressing the unity physics that goes on in, in the star. So the first EFT that we would like to construct would be a one-particle EFT. This EFT would integrate out Rs. 
The second EFT that we have to construct is the one that eliminates the cortical separation. Sorry. Um, and this would be um, this would be the two particle EFT, or the binary or the two body EFT, whatever you want to call it. The last EFT that we would like to have is the one that would integrate out the radiation scale. This we would call EFT of radiation. When we focus on the conservative sector, as in the case of my line of research, where we are interested to know what is the conservative dynamics that is going on to very high accuracy, we are by definition considering the part of the action that does not contain radiation field modes in it. And therefore, we don't even have to go through the third stage. We actually just construct two EFTs to, to get to an action that doesn't have any field modes anymore. Um, so by principle, generally, when you have, when you identify different scales in the problem, the process that you go through is that you construct an EFT for each of the scales along the way. So that's the logic. Okay. Another thing that, uh, another thing that is very general to know about EFTs is that basically there are two generic approaches to construct EFTs. Um, so that's also very universal and very good to know. There are two ways to attack the problem. We, we acknowledge the fact that for each scale we want to construct an EFT, each scale that we want to remove. Now how do we do it? So actually this, uh, this research gives perfect example for how to use both of the two generic procedures. The two generic procedures, they usually refer to as the bottom-up approach and the top-down approach. Um, by the way, is there like a clock?